Good morning, folks. Today we're hitting the weather, a recurrent nova, solar forcing, and a significant heliobiology and pole shift health update. But we also have space weather to keep watching, so let's start with the last 24 hours on our star. More solar flares, coronal holes, and plasma filaments. The sun has been benign in terms of Earth-directed events, but the sunspot number is still high. We have solar wind enhancements coming from the coronal holes, but luckily, nothing major is erupting this way. The solar flaring is expected to continue, but we have had a little break here the last few hours in the morning, as you see here on the GOES X-ray flux chart. Again, more M-class flares are likely. The solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet right now due mostly to a drop in plasma speed of the stream, seen in the purple line second from the bottom here. The earthquake watch is ramping up and has to be expected to continue for several days. The central coronal holes have connected to Earth magnetically, and there is another incoming on the north, both of solid size. Seismic watch very high through the weekend here. Let's go to southern Africa next, where a record drought is pounding habitability for everything from plants and animals to the people trying to grow crops. Weakest rainy season in the 40-year record there, major jet stream shift effects in play. Up next, we're going to zoom in on the Little Dumbbell Nebula. Hubble's latest examination peers deep into the center to reveal that the central star that made the nebula is still there, still able to go boom again one day. Long period recurrent nova scenario for that one. Up next, we're heading to an excellent look at solar forcing of El Nino and overall conditions in both Australia and England. The concept of solar forcing of ENSO is not new and is even acknowledged by the global climate groups, but it still doesn't make its way into the long-term models. Here, we see confirmation of both the decadal and the centennial levels of control by the sun over the most important weather driver across the planet. Last but not least, the full paper isn't even out yet, but the people in the heliobiology and space energy health impact fields are already excited over this one. Among other things, they are diving into the impact of cosmic rays on childhood leukemia and carcinogenic effects overall, and include the importance of Earth's magnetic field protecting our planet. It's a quintessential warning that we have given dozens of times due to the current weakening of that protective field in the ongoing magnetic pole shift. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.